What is going on YouTube? So today we are going to be replacing a power steering pump on a 2014 Infiniti Q60. And this is with the 3.7 liter V6. Okay, so this may be different on a factory car, but this one has the Stillen dual intakes. And we're actually removing this intake tube so we have more room when we uh, pull the pump out. So he's using a flat head up here to get these worm clamps loose. And then we have these uh, T-bolt clamps right here that we'll need to break free. And hopefully we can work around this and not have to mess with this pop once all this pulls out, but we'll see. Okay, so he just pulled the pop off and hopefully we have enough room to kind of finagle the pump out right there. Okay, so right now, I don't know if you guys can see that, but we're trying to get this 3 8 drive breaker bar on the belt tensioner right there. As you guys can see, it's underneath the radiator hose, and we've been driving this car, so it's extremely hot. So I definitely recommend doing this with a cooled off car, but I'm trying to get the camera to focus so you guys can see where he's putting that. Once you fight with it and get it on, you're just going to have to... Drain, and then the belt should loosen up. Actually, I think he's got it. We're just gonna leave the breaker bar on the tensioner because it was such a struggle trying to get it in place. So now, looks like we have pretty good access to the power steering pump. I guess now we're gonna try to use a transfer pump and get some of this fluid out of the reservoir so we don't make a huge mess once we start disconnecting all these power steering lines. Okay, so yeah, we're using a transfer pump to pull all the power steering fluid out. We want to start by removing this rubber hose off the power steering pump. You may have some residual fluid in here, but it, it won't be much. So, let me grab a rag just to have one handy, just in case there is a mess, which I don't know if there's going to be much, but just in case. We just went ahead and took the entire rubber hose off and I took a vacuum cap and I didn't have any big enough to actually fit over this but I had some smaller ones that actually slid in the inside and plugged that off. We're still going to leave the pump bolted on so that way we can put torque on this, what is that, 24 millimeter? Yeah, 24. So your banjo bolt is a 24 <clears throat> millimeter. We have a big ass breaker bar. So he's taking off the high pressure line off right now. And your new pair of steering pump will come with new uh, copper washers, which we dropped the old ones. It doesn't matter. We have new ones anyway. So do not reuse those. Okay, so it looks like we may have to remove that top bolt right here if you guys can see my finger I'm pointing at it right there then we have another one that you're gonna have to access through the pulley itself which you have these little holes in the pulley okay so that bottom bolt is actually a 14 and the top one is a 12 so I don't know if you guys can really get a good idea of where that 14 is located it's on the bottom right of the pump and you have to go through the pulley to get access to it. So what'd you do, just go by feel? Yeah. So yeah, you just kind of have to go by feel. Maybe start the socket first. And then, uh, yeah, you have that 14 and then the 12 up top and the pump's free. So he's actually running out to grab my electric ratchet, which would make that 14 millimeter bolt removal a lot easier so I'm gonna do this 12 by hand actually now that he's here with the electric ratchet we'll just go ahead and zip both of these out with that okay so that bottom 14 is really long and it's actually hitting up against the fan so we're gonna go ahead and remove this uh, top 12 and see if we can't move the pump and pivot it on that one 14 just to see if we can get some clearance and get that 
14 out because it is a pretty long bolt. Right now he's jacking up the car. Looks like we're gonna have to remove these 10 millimeter bolts holding on the fan trail. You have one in the top right corner and another on the top left over here. And then uh, trying to get access to the bottom of the car so we can see what else is holding up the shroud. Yeah, I think you just removed those two tins up top and once you get this coolant reservoir out of the way you can push the fan trail down and uh, this car has these quick disconnect style like allen bolts here that I'm loosening up right now with an allen wrench Okay, this is actually completely free now. So matter of fact, it was actually snagging on the bolt itself. So now we have the fan shroud pushed down enough that he can actually just pull the bolt completely out. It's actually threaded in just a little bit, but there we go. Yep, so you do have to loosen up the fan shroud and the coolant reservoir just to move it around just enough to get that bottom 14 millimeter bolt out. So we already have the 12 out and now he's just kind of working on pulling the pump completely out of the car we may have to stick a flathead in there and kind of pry it out so he would shove a flathead up in behind the pump and it's just a really tight fit but just kind of pry on it and it will come right out just like that. So here you guys can see that's where that 14 millimeter bolt threaded through right there right above the alternator and there's your 12 right there. That's the two bolts holding in the pump. And I don't know if you guys can tell but that is the reason we're replacing the power steering pump see that wobble that is pretty bad and there's a lot of slack in that pulley that thing is fried so the power steering pump that we bought is actually a brand new Duralast pump from AutoZone and with that pump you have to reuse your existing bracket which is removed by these two bolts here and we have a star bit screw right there that we need to remove and reuse that pickup tube so I think Cardone and probably if you can find an OEM pump they come with the brackets but the pump that we have does not so those two bolts are 12 millimeters and now we have the bracket and now we're going to grab the star bit or Torx and go ahead and remove that tube so just go ahead and use your existing pump as a template when you remove that bracket. So for some reason, there's four threaded holes. You just have to use the top two holes. Let me try to get my fingers. Those two are the ones you're gonna have to use when you go back and thread your 12 millimeter bolts back into your new pump. Okay, so that star bit is actually a Torx 25. He's removing that tube right now. And with the kit, they include a new rubber O-ring. So make sure that you use the new O-ring and not the old one. So just take a pick and pull the old O-ring off. It'd be nice if a man had about 15 different sets of hands. <laughs> okay. So he's grabbing the new O ring. Just put a little bit of fluid on it, lube it up. And these things are always tricky to try to put back on, but make sure it sits in place. And now we can go ahead and shove that back in to place. And 
it only goes in one way that corner hole right there so I'll go ahead and get that started and now the pump is pretty much ready to be put back on the car well, we're putting the new pump in place it's kind of tight it was tight coming out so it's of course naturally going to be tight going in so he's just kind of massaging it in place with that dead blow trying to get everything lined up looks like he's wanting to start with the 14 millimeter first which is probably smart since it's hard to get to we definitely recommend starting with the 14 at the bottom first it is tricky to get it started but once it's in place the bolt will slide right in then we got that one in and now we can go ahead and get this 12 in up top it's a lot easier to line up so you can see it There's both the bolts in, and now we're just going to torque them down. Five more years. <laughs> just on there. And the torque spec is uh, just tighten it until it doesn't break. <laughs> That's how we do things around here. ASC certified too. Okay, so we have one copper washer started on the banjo bolt right now, and then you're going to have to sandwich the other one on the bottom, just like so. And then get her threaded on in there. And as you can see, it's got a little nub sticking out from the banjo bolt fitting that slides into the slot on the bracket. The banjo bolt needs to be torqued down anywhere from 37 to 50 foot pounds. And make sure this is actually two spec because banjo bolts are notorious for snapping so we have that torque to 35 foot pounds and that's what I would recommend so you guys don't end up snapping that bolt and that would just ruin your entire day okay so now that we have the pump on there's gonna be no clearance issues I'm trying to get this fan shroud back on so that's what we're doing right now we're trying to line up the shroud with the mounting holes cool it take you can just lay it over to the side like that so I'm gonna go ahead and grab those two 10 millimeter bolts that went in and held that fan shroud in place fan shroud is back in place cool it reservoir is in place and cool little trick is for better leverage you can actually take the handle off a of jack and slide it over your breaker bar and that gives you way more leverage so the belt is actually on so all that's left is just hooking up our rubber hoses and filling up the power steering reservoir. Now we have that bottom rubber hose from the reservoir hooked up. Hooking up the intake back on and then make sure you reconnect the mass airflow sensor. Okay, so just go ahead and top off your reservoir with fresh fluid. Once it's topped off, what we want to do is bleed the system. So it doesn't matter if you overfill it, it's probably going to suck a little in as it's bleeding, so that's no big deal. So what I'm going to have him do is start the car and turn it full lock each way. So if you hear a whine, that's perfectly normal, because right now we're just bleeding the entire system. The fluid needs to go through the pump, through the rack. Yeah, he's just gonna do that a couple of times. And as you can see, the fluid has actually dropped to the perfect level. So that worked out great. And the best part is, no more wobble. So there you have it. That is a power steering pump replacement on a 2014 Infinity Q60. And this is with the 3.7 V6. This will probably correlate with the Nissan, uh, pretty much any Nissan or Infinity with this same engine. So as always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more.